What is resilience? Why is it important? And how can we develop it in ourselves? Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Green, PhD psychologist and family therapist at the clinic Buchinger Behemi in Überlingen, Germany. In this video, we will talk about how you can improve your resilience in order to better cope with life's challenges. So what do we mean by resilience? Resilience refers to how well you deal with and bounce back from difficulties in life. It can mean the difference between handling pressure and losing your cool, or even getting sick. Now, while research has shown that some people are naturally resilient, attitudes and behaviors that foster coping can be and are learned throughout our lives. Resilience is like a muscle. It needs training to be strong. So to, it's not about avoiding stress, it's about learning to cope effectively. When you're going through a rough patch, you'll be experiencing a degree of stress. Now, while stress is a normal part of life, too much of it can be harmful for our minds and our bodies. In my experience, the most essential ingredient for enhancing resilience is therefore to nurture yourself physically, emotionally, socially. Nurturing yourself helps strengthen the mind and body so you have the resources available to you that you need to handle the situation you're currently trying to cope with. There are a number of ways to strengthen your resilience. I've chosen seven strategies that, taken together, I think will put you in the best possible place to deal with whatever life throws your way and are backed by science. First, care for your body. The three most basic building blocks for good physical and mental health are also the easiest to let go of when going through tough times. Sleep, exercise, and nutrition. To keep the body healthy and help us stay centered emotionally, we need sufficient sleep, moderate exercise, and good nutrition. Also, pampering yourself, for example, with a bubble bath or an ice cream, dressing nicely, will help you to feel better about yourself and improve your self-esteem. Difficult situations pose threats to our self-esteem, so it's important to do everything we can to make ourselves feel good about ourselves again. Caring for our bodies sends a powerful, positive message to ourselves regarding our self-worth. Second, access social support networks. Social support is the most important positive protective factor, whereas social isolation is a major risk factor for mental health. Seek out those friends, family members, and colleagues with whom you have nurturing relationships. That is, people you feel safe with, who accept you and won't judge you. Remember, nobody can read your mind, so don't forget to tell them what your needs are and how they can help you. Otherwise, you might be being offered help in ways that you don't find helpful. Third, acknowledge and express your emotions. A major risk factor for developing psychopathology is by not acknowledging your thoughts and your feelings. During rough patches in our lives, will we be most likely experiencing difficult emotions, such as anger, frustration, loneliness, even despair. Pretending they're not there or trying not to feel them is detrimental to mental health. In fact, it's often the underlying issue in many harmful behaviors that attempt to solve the problem of difficult emotions and low self-esteem, such as smoking, high alcohol and drug consumption, as well as risky sex behavior, eating disorders, and other mental illnesses. This is why psychotherapy and counseling provide safe settings in which thoughts and feelings can be safely expressed without judgment so that more healthy coping strategies can be developed and resilience increased. However, not all situations require the support of a therapist. Expressing your thoughts and feelings to a trusted few is often sufficient. Alternatively, you can use an expressive writing technique where you write down your deepest thoughts and fears. It's not about writing a good essay. It's about simply writing what comes to mind without negative judgment of yourself. And this can lead to surprising insights about yourself and increase your self-empathy. In general, it's important to be gentle with yourself in times of stress. 
Treat yourself like you do your good friends. Be encouraging in your internal dialogue. Expressing positive emotions also greatly increases resilience. So don't forget to laugh, have fun, and check out on your problems for a short time. There's a reason they say laughing is the best medicine. Fourth, change the narrative. Despite the difficult situation you may be in, every crisis also presents an opportunity for growth. No matter how awful the situation is, there is always a silver lining in there somewhere. What little piece of good has come about because of this situation, because you've gone through it, that you truly value? Also, write these things down and keep the list at hand so you can remind yourself that there are still things to be grateful for despite whatever else is going on in your life. Another way to change the narrative is to reframe a problem as a challenge. It already seems easier to overcome and will help you to utilize the fifth strategy to maintain a problem-solving attitude. Believing that you can and will overcome a difficulty or find a solution greatly increases your resilience because it helps you look for solutions rather than dwelling on the problem. When, look for, when looking for solutions, first, identify your needs, and then develop an individual solution that meets exactly those needs. It doesn't matter what other people think or what's considered normal. Different people have different needs. Get creative and be prepared to think outside the box when looking for your personal solution. Sixth, accept that life has ups and downs. Sometimes, there is simply no solution. For example, in the case of deep personal loss, such as the loss of a loved one, in these cases you will grieve and then need to accept that loss. Acceptance requires the opposite of the other strategies. Namely, it requires letting go of trying to change the situation. Nonetheless, you can try to find a way to live with that loss as best as possible. Seventh, Stay hopeful. Being hopeful is not about pretending things are okay when they're not. In fact, optimists actually have a more realistic perception of reality than pessimists do. Hope and possibly a belief in God or a higher power can carry us through our deepest, darkest moments. Then just keep living until life gets good again, because it will. Thank you for your attention. Embrace your resilience and have a nice day.